Hi everyone, Jess here from the Scrappy Sisters and thank you for joining me for another Kidaholics Kids Design Team layout. I'm going to let you know in advance, I am sorry, this is a little bit of a long one. I had trouble cutting this one down because I've included watercolours at the start as well. So once I start um, creating my own paper, it just pulls out the length of this entire layout. So I have hand cut... Uh, my title or part of my title um, and then I want to match tone on tone in the background with the same color as the letter so I have watered up my page to get the um, the paper nice and smooth so that the watercolors will just sort of smoothly brush on and then I've got my water brush and as I can see, you can see there, I'm just making this sort of cascading waterfall type effect um, with the color that matches each of the letters. So that was the number one and I've done that. And then I've got a Y. So here's my little water blob and then getting my paintbrush. I'm just also color testing. I wanna make sure I'm getting the best choice of color um, because it was hard to know exactly what these are going to look like when you put them on paper i know there was a picture on the side of the box which is super helpful but i just wanted to see for real how exactly it looked so i just did a quick little swatch on a scrap sheet of paper so that's for my letter y and my letter e is pink now there actually is no pink in this um sorry, in this little travel pack, which I found really interesting. Now, of course, I could have mixed up my own. There is space to do some mixing. Um, you could do it in that little water jar. You could just do it on the lid or in the, the rest of the little sort of middle tray. I was being super lazy and just decided I'd go with the red. It'll be fine. No big deal. Here's my A. Have you worked out what I'm spelling yet? There's a one, there's a Y, there's an E, there's an A. <laughs> and you can even see the R over there. So I'm sure you've all figured it out by now. So yeah, um, obviously didn't be super careful about sizes because you can see that that light blue one's got quite big and the R's gonna have to be quite big to fill the last part of the page. I possibly could have measured these out a bit more carefully, but um, you don't even notice in the end because the A and the R are actually quite a fat letter. So it's almost like I did it on purpose anyway. So win-win. So once I have done all of these, um, I leave that to dry. And then I actually decide that my letters were looking a little bit flat. So I go ahead off screen and stitch each of my letters around the edge of each of my letters. Um, if you are a Kidholics Kit subscriber, I have got a tutorial on stitching on layouts that is on a um, for a different layout, but the same principle applies. So make sure you check out that exclusive. So I went ahead and did tone on tone stitching all the way around the edge of each of the letters. And now I'm going to start sticking all those down. Actually, I think I'm going to prep a little bit first just to have my um, layout ready in my brain. Um, but I'm going to start sticking everything down. So you can see the gorgeous stitching there around the E a lot better than you can around the I. It's also quite difficult to see around the A, but obviously it's around all of them. Um, you can see it on the back of the R quite well. But yeah, just really subtle, but I think it makes a really big difference when you have a look at the layout's close-up photos. Um, just having that texture makes a really big difference. <laughs> so I'm now going to layer up, put all of my ephemera and bits and bobs behind each and on top of each of the letters. So that's actually the inside of the frame. I think it's technically designed to be trash, to be rubbish, but I really like them because they tend to have the color of the big frame and then the color of whatever piece of ephemera they've used the space inside the frame for. So in this case, it was like a little bit of blue and a little bit of pink, which really worked for me. 
So I actually um, have used the inside, have used the trash, because, yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> so I used double-sided tape when making this bow. Uh, I think Louise has used... Um, has used hot glue gun. Uh, I think I'm going to try that next. I am finding these a little bit tricky to stay together. Last time I used my glue, my gl my wet glue, it absolutely worked and it was very strong, but it took time to dry and I had to kind of hold it for quite a while to get the glue to dry. Having said that, I don't use a quick dry or a tacky glue, so that's always going to be a bit of a problem for me. Um, so this time around, I used double-sided tape. So that was obviously better in terms of I didn't have to hold it, but the hold itself wasn't as strong as what the glue was. So I think next time I'm going to try the hot glue gun. So I wanted to use this shirt because um, this is about my husband and I having our first year anniversary. So this is an old photo and we obviously were all dressed up and out to dinner. So I liked the idea of having that shirt because it kind of like looked like a dress up shirt, but it actually was, I think, a police officer's shirt because it had a like a sheriff's badge on the front. So I covered the badge with the phrase quality time. So now it just looks like a shirt and quality time. And then I liked putting the... Um, the bows on because it kind of makes it a little bit girly and that's a little bit about me. So there's got my husband's shirt and my little girly bows. And I'm not even wearing bows, but it's just the concept, what it represents. So again, I'm using the inside of this um, frame as well. Again, what would be classified as the trash. I just like the little pop of color. It's not super like dominating over top of the alpha. Um, which is really important because the alpha, the one year, is like part of my title. So I want to make sure that that is noticeable. Um, one little floral because that flower was just gorgeous. And I am going to pop it up on foam. I also popped the quality time up on foam as well, but left the shirt directly on the page. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of matching some tone on tones here. I am loving that feel at the moment. Uh, and I had a little bit of trouble when it come, came to the Y. I didn't really have any ephemera that was yellow, unfortunately. Um, so in the end, I, oh, side note, popped that acrylic on. There was no ephemera that was specifically white either but this acrylic was just absolutely perfect because a love heart one year anniversary what more could you ask so that worked really well again same issue here with my glue choice i don't have quick dry or tacky glue so i am holding that on just while it sort of catches and sticks a little bit so in terms of yellow <laughs> um, ephemera there wasn't really any so i have pulled out that mug. Uh, I'm having a cocktail, so I'm not really drinking out of a mug, but you know, it still represents. So I'm just going to flow with it. And then I decide to throw on one more of those gorgeous bows. I really love that this, this, um, this month's bows are like a bit different. They're not just the standard bow. They're kind of like, you know, the swivelly swirly bows. Uh, I think that makes a really nice change to the bow, to the standard bow. So I wanted to include two. So just got out the gorgeous blue puffy stickers and put anniversary. Um, so my title is now complete, one year anniversary. And I'm actually sort of almost finished. I was contemplating leaving it like this. So I'm putting on all of my enamel dots. Well, not all of the enamel dots that I'm using. I'm putting those on. And again, tone on tone. I'm not going to change it up now when you're on a good thing. Keep going. I do need to grab um, an, a difference um, from a packet of enamel dots from my stash. These were actually from a Kitaholic kit, but don't ask me which one. Uh, to get two black dots to put on my 
letter I, my number I, my letter I. Oh my goodness. It's not even a number I, my number one. Ah, crazy. Um, so I decided that I wanted to put those super cute love hearts down next to me, but it needed a few more layers behind it. It needed something else going on. So I'm going to use some of the um, like label stickers and sort of layer those up and just make some really super cute, um, yeah, just layers, just, just something to build my cluster on top of. Much better. Just gives it sort of a bit of a base, base to sit on. So I needed a little bit of glue because it's going to stick to my photo and then a little bit of foam because my photo is popped up on foam, of course. So I love me a word phrase. So I'm just having a read through to see if any of these are going to fit um, for this particular occasion. And I end up just trimming one down a little bit. It had at home at the end of it. And obviously I'm not at home, I'm out to dinner. So I just chopped the at home. And I actually used the at home on a different layer. So it doesn't even go to waste. Go me. Um, then just a few more bits and bobs to stick down. And then I think I am pretty much finished. As I mentioned, I did need to pull out um, some black enamel dots from a different packet of enamel dots. So I'm just popping those on. Gorgeous. <laughs> Sticking this one flat down to the page. I quite like this, having this layer of um, more and more underneath. I think that's really cute. And the orange and the orange ties in really well together. This cluster was just missing the blue from the whole sort of set when you look up at the words at the top. So now I think we are pretty much done. <laughs> just making sure that acrylic is really stuck on. Don't want it popping off when it goes into its pocket in my album. Got to pop on some enamel, uh, some enamel, some Heidi Swap Color Shine because you know me getting out my gold. Just covered up my photo to make sure I didn't put any splatters right on my face because that's not ideal at this moment when the rest of my layout is done. I did decide it was missing something. So my layout was finished, but I come back to it because it needed a little bit more. So I've cut a one inch strip of that super gorgeous um, love heart paper and I'm distressing up the edge that's against the layer so like the top edge and the bottom edge the edge that's um facing out towards the layout and then i am sticking the paper down with glue so you can see there the top of the bottom edge has been distressed if that makes sense facing against the layout so it's it's smooth around the edges but it's rough on the inside just there so I'm doing the top and the bottom same style so concentrate when you do this if you are going to represent this at home because your paper goes in a certain direction you want your love hearts to be the correct way up so you have to make sure that you are distressing the edge that is going to have your love hearts be facing up just a word of warning I didn't mess it up but I have been known to so I just made sure I really double checked before I started distressing. So when I stick this one on, my love hearts are still the correct way up. Yay. <laughs> so I could have left it just like this, but I decided um, I wanted to tie in the stitching around the letters. So I actually pull out my sewing machine. Hence why this layout is getting longer and longer and longer, people. Thank you so much. I hope you are still sticking around. There's been watercolour. There's been stitching. There's been creating of layouts. This, this layout just keeps going on and on and on. 
So I just did a stitching line along the top and along the bottom just to add a nice little border to finish off this page. So thank you so much for watching. This was such a long one. I hope you have enjoyed this process and I hope it has inspired you to get scrapping. Thank you everyone. Have a lovely, lovely day.